Pool equipment has come a long way, but I never knew that just 150 years ago, some pool balls were so unstable that they used to actually explode. Today, most pool balls are made of resin, but back in the 19th century, they were made of elephant ivory. Elephant ivory was expensive and fairly difficult to obtain. Pool was so popular in those days that they thought the billiard ball's production would eventually cause the extension of elephants. I know that sounds crazy, but look at this picture. This guy is sitting on his company's stock of 20,000 ivory balls. And knowing that they were able to produce 5 balls per elephant tusk, that pile is the equivalent of 2,000 dead elephants. So, in 1863, Phelan and Colander, one of the biggest billiard table manufacturers at the time, decided to offer $10,000, or $300,000 of today's money, as a reward to anybody that could invent a new material that could be used for billiard balls in order to stop using elephant ivory. It took a couple of years, but an inventor named John Wesley Hyatt came up with a solution. He mixed nitrocellulose with alcohol and a waxy resin called camphor and molded it into a bowl that looked and felt a lot like elephant ivory. This material, patented as celluloid, was the first ever mass-market synthetic plastic. As a side note, it's quite cool to see that pool was so popular back in those days that it actually was one of the key contributors behind the invention of plastic, which is obviously a material that had a massive impact on our society. But there was a problem with these new celluloid balls. They could actually explode. Nitrocellulose is also called gun cotton, and it is combustible. It explodes so rapidly that it doesn't typically set anything on fire around it, but it can burst into flame and make a loud bang. Hayat himself wrote in 1914, in order to secure strength and beauty, only coloring pigments were added, and in the least quantity. Consequently, a lighted cigar applied would at once result in a serious flame, and occasionally, the violent contact of the balls would produce a mild explosion, like a percussion gun cap. We had a letter from a billet saloon proprietor in Colorado mentioning this fact, and saying he did not care so much about it, but that, instantly, every man in the room pulled his gun. 